Hey everyone, in this video we will dive into optimizing your Rails app for search engines and social media sharing. As always, the source code used in this video is available in the blog post linked in the description below. Some of the implementation details described in this video will depend on how your application is rendered. So before we get started, let's figure out if we're dealing with a client-side rendered or server-side rendered application. To find out, right-click on the page and select View Page Source. If you see HTML elements like this, your application is server-side rendered, and this video is for you. Now let's take a look at this React app, and you see something like this, where it's just a single line. So in this case, your application is client-side rendered, so some of the implementation details we will go over in this video won't be applicable to you. But make sure to subscribe to my channel because I have an SEO guide for client-rendered applications coming very soon. Alright, with that out of the way, let's take a look at some of the tools we will be using to test our SEO and social media previews. You will find links to each of these sites in the description below. We will use SEO Ability to get an overall picture of how search engine friendly our site is, and we will use the developer tools provided by LinkedIn and Twitter to see how our site looks when it's shared on those platforms. Since all these tools require a web link, we will need to connect our Rails server that is running on our local machine to the internet. To do this, we will use a free tool called Ngrok. I will include a link to their site in the description so you can download and install it on your machine. So fire up your Rails server, set up ngrok, and point it to the port that your Rails server is listening on. Copy the link it generates and paste it into the browser. Cool, we get a nice error because our configuration doesn't allow the Rails app to be posted on that domain. So let's change that. Jump into config slash development RB and whitelist the domain ngrok generated for us. And restart the server. Okay, with that change in place, our development Rails server is now accessible from the outside world. Before making any changes, let's get a baseline and see what we're missing for good SEO. Let's go on SEO Ability for an overview. So we have a bunch of problems, missing title description and so on. When we scroll to the bottom, we see that there's no search engine preview. So our work is cut out for us. Now that we have a way to get feedback from these tools quickly, Let's start fixing these problems. First, install the meta tags gem by adding it to the gem file and running bundle install. We will use meta tags to set the title and page description along with the open graph and custom tags. With the meta tags installed, we can set the tags in the controller and render them in the application layout. So to do this, jump into the controller and add instance variables for the page title, page description, and page keywords and assign them to whatever you like. Page keywords takes a comma separated string of keywords. Next, we will set the open graph aka OG tags along with the custom tags for Twitter. To set open graph and Twitter tags, use the set meta tags method and pass it the OG and Twitter hash keys. For the open graph format, provide the path to the preview image you'd like to use and set the title and description. I'm going to set it to the same value as the meta title and description. For Twitter, provide the link to the preview image and specify the size so it scales responsively. Set the card type to summary large image so Twitter knows the content type and can show it accordingly. With the controller code in place, navigate to the application layout and render the meta tags there. This will dynamically show all the meta tags you set in the controller in the head of the HTML document. Let's check SEO ability and see how we're doing. We see the title and the description in the Google preview, and with this foundation in place, let's see how the site looks for social media sharing. We see a preview for Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Looks good. We have a social media preview, but the browser tab is looking plain. Let's change that by adding a favicon. The easiest way to do this is to add one symmetric favicon and then render it for all the sizes and specifications. This way, the client will use one favicon and resize it accordingly. To do this, create a partial and drop in two loops. The first one will render a list of Apple Touch icons of various sizes, so Apple devices have plenty of favicon choices to choose from. The second loop will render the standard icon favicon in 16 by 16 and 32 by 32 sizes. Save the file, jump into the application layout, 
And here we will render this partial in the HTML head. Hard reload the page, and we see the favicon. Cool. Let's check back on how this page is doing on SEO ability. We see that the language is not specified in the HTML markup. So let's fix that. And while we're at it, let's extract the site content we wrote in the controller to a locale file. Open application.rb and drop in the plumbing that sets the path for loading locale files, the default fallback language, and the available languages. With this in place, restart the server and Rails should automatically and recursively load all the files under config slash locales. Next, jump into the application layout and set the HTML language dynamically using the Rails internationalization helper. Flip back to SEO ability, and we see that the language is correctly set. Now that we have a great website with amazing content, it's time to let search engine crawlers know what paths are available in our domain. This is done with an XML sitemap that describes to crawlers what links are available for exploration on the website. Use the sitemap generator gem to do this by adding it to the gem file and then creating a configuration under config slash sitemap.rb. Set the host to your domain, for me it's restaurant.com, and then set the paths you want to be included in the XML document. You can define these manually as relative paths or use the included Rails route helpers. When you deploy this code to production, you can run the rake task to generate the sitemap. Let's take it for a spin and see if it works. I'm going to SSH into my server, navigate to where the application is installed, and run the rake task. We see from the output that the sitemap was generated and the application pinged Google and Bing, letting them know to come check out the new sitemap. If you copy and visit the URL that is generated, the server gives you an XML sitemap. So there you have it. If these tips were helpful, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. I'll catch you next time.